Hi everybody, Adam from Winning with SketchUp here with you again, and today we're going to continue our look at Enscape, the real-time rendering solution coming to SketchUp. And today we're going to focus on material creation in Enscape and how to go about changing the look of our materials for the SketchUp models that we're trying to render. The way that it works in Enscape, everything is controlled based on keywords. And what this means is that when we're in SketchUp, when we name our materials for any object in the scene, that if our material name has any one of these keywords in it, it will take on the look of that keyword. So right now, these are the keywords that Enscape is programmed for, and I'm sure there's going to be quite a few more as the development continues. But for now, let's go through the ones that are available. Let me pull up our dialogues here and I'm gonna go through these and we can see down in the second window that I do have Enscape running and I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a link to this SketchUp model as well so you guys will have um, the card here, the, the cheat sheet for all the different keywords as well as the materials that I've gone ahead and set up here. So the first one we want to look at are the liquid materials and they are driven by the keywords water or ocean or even river I've figured out um, will take on the look of water. So we can see I have three spheres here, one named water, one named ocean, and one with the material named river. And if we look down here in our Enscape um, viewer down here, we can see that they all indeed look like water. And we can see we're getting some warped reflections through or refraction through those. And we can see the it's even changing the look of um, the text behind it. And we're getting some light passing through. And I have a little pool that I've modeled here. And we can take a look at the water here. And obviously, the higher that we, um, the viewing angle as that changes, you can see the reflection changes, which is really nice. And also, if we do change our atmosphere, we can see that the look of the water changes as well. The next one I want to look at is translucency or subsurface scattering. And this is really useful in any type of vegetation. So if we have a plant or leaves in our scene or grass or anything along those lines, we want to make sure that we give it the name either vegetation or foliage. And we don't have to give it that as the only name. It just has to contain that string of letters in the name somewhere. So this could be um, leaf 01 and then just have vegetation at the end or foliage at the end and it will take on the look here. So I have two leaves here that I've modeled and one is called vegetation, the other is foliage. And it's really nice is I'm going to change down here. I'm going to change the lighting a little bit. And I don't know if you can see that, but we're actually passing a little bit of light is passing through the leaf itself. And it's a subtle effect overall. But I'll show you over here on the plant that I have. And this is one of the plants that I modeled and gave away for free as a part of the Scape Up um, library of plants that I'm working on. And this is a liriope grass, or a lily turf as it's called. And let's look here. I have the leaf material, and I'm going to go ahead and name that with uh, right now I have plastic, which is giving it a little bit of a reflection, and I was just testing that. So now I'm going to give it the name foliage, and you can see down here how that changed. And 
And I'm going to move that over and just look at the shadowing there as well. And again, it all depends on our atmosphere. Um, if there are less clouds in the sky, it gets a little bit brighter. And we have a stem material here. And I can call that vegetation. And we can see that the look instantly changed down here. And I have our um, little flower buds here. And I'm going to go ahead and just watch the difference. Um, focus on the bud here. I'm going to paste in that foliage, hit enter, and we can see how that changed the look entirely of the plant. So, and I think that looks pretty good overall. So now let's talk about the reflective materials. So in order to control reflectivity, we're going to use these keywords, any one of these keywords. And I have all of these spheres um, set with these keywords. So we can see chrome, mirror, steel, copper, metal, aluminum. And let's just first of all focus on those and take a look. And let's go to the first one here, which is chrome. And we can see that it's getting um, near perfect reflections. And if we change the time of day, we can see that the clouds are changing. And if we adjust and see the cirrus clouds in the background, uh, we can adjust the variety here, the density. And now if we change the time of day, we can see those clouds moving, which is really neat. Really cool real-time reflections. Um, even get into nighttime here. And turn up our exposure. And turn down the clouds. We can see the moon and the stars. And even those are being reflected, which is really neat. So I think that's pretty impressive. Um, next, we do have mirror, which should be more of a perfect reflection. And then next to that, we have steel, which you can see is more of a blurred reflection. And then we have copper. And we can change the color as well um, for any of these. We can adjust. It's, it's all just controlling the reflectivity. So See there, maybe um, a mirror, we'd want to go more to a white. Chrome, probably more towards a black. And here we have a metal, which I am actually driving with a texture here. So, and let me, let me just map this on here real quick. And let's go front view. Grab that and use Sketch UV and go cylindrical. There we go. And let me bring that back. Should get rid of some of that tiling. And next to metal we have aluminum here which we can see is just a little more of blurred reflections um, but it's really nice how it's picking up what's next to it and just really good looking reflections for a real-time engine um, now we have these four blue spheres which i all 
I did them all the same color so we can see the difference between um, car paint, polished, acrylic, and plastic. So we can see car paint on the end is picking up um, a lot of reflection, almost has the look of a little bit of a um, coating to it. And next to that we have the polished look, which is just a little bit less, the acrylic look, which is just a little bit less than that, and then the plastic look, um, which is a little more blurred reflections. And then on the end we have marble, um, which I'm driving with a material, and we can see here that it's just getting a little bit of a re reflection. Um, the glossiness is spread out a little more and you can see the glossiness getting tighter over each one of these. So the way you want to think about this is it doesn't have to be a marble material to get the marble naming convention. If something, anything that you want to have that level of reflectivity, just drive it with the word marble or plastic. Um, you know, something like maybe even a road or an asphalt, you might call plastic um, to give it that reflectivity that you're looking for. You might call it marble, um, anything along those lines. So just a good thing to keep in mind. You can also link, um, these don't have to be solid colors. Any one of these could also be um, a texture itself. So if we go to metal here and I had um, any one of these materials here, I could apply that and let's just change the mapping. But you can see what that looks like overall. So um, the only other thing that I really wanted to touch on with the materials, they are, there's a lot of, um, somebody actually mentioned to me that they were having issues with the materials changing color, and I did notice the materials do receive a good bit of color bleeding, um, which is good, it's realistic, but things like your background over here in your atmosphere tab, will change the look of some of your materials, especially when they're reflective. So we can see if we change this to grass, that it's going to pick up um, the look of that overall. You can see um, the texture there on that pool and how that's changing um, based on, you could have white in there, you could have black and it just changes the look overall, as does our clouds. So if we turn our cloud density all the way up, you can see that this changed a little bit, and we might need to go in and control our exposure then um, to adjust the materials. And what's re really nice is if we go into um, SketchUp and sample the material here and we make those changes over here in SketchUp um, and let's say darken our material that all of that will happen over here in real time. Oops, go back to perspective and there we go. You can see that's changing the look there from light to dark. And sometimes you might need to control the, the texture just a little bit depending on um, how well the exposure is handling all the variables over in Enscape. So like I said, I will share this with you guys and you guys can have the model and play with some of these things yourself. And we'll continue on our look at Enscape in a future video, but for now I hope that was helpful and talk to you guys soon. Have a great day. Happy sketching and hope everybody is winning.